Last year, on September 11th, 2020, before we had access to COVID vaccines, before we were about to start an entire year of remote teaching and working from home, my neighborhood looked like this in the middle of the day. This wasn't fog. It was wildfire smoke. Huge swaths of forest in the Cascades were on fire. Unseasonal winds from the east whipped up furious blazes, filling our cities with smoke, and then, just as quickly, the winds died down and the air went stagnant. For days, we were enveloped in this choking miasma, a reminder of our own fragility and the supremacy of nature. One of the areas that was on fire included one of my favorite local trails. I was breathing in the destruction of one of the places I held most dearly in this region. Finally, after almost a year, I was able to get back in to see for myself what the inferno had left behind. Before I go on, I do need to ask for your support. Making these videos isn't free, and it costs a lot of time and money for me to do this. It is a labor of love, but I could use your contributions. All Patreon supporters get access to exclusive content, and higher tier patrons get mentioned at the end of the video, as well as early access for Lomi Goodness level sponsors. Please take a moment to navigate to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash voiceovertrails and provide support at a level you think is appropriate for the value you get out of this channel. The Susan Creek Trail is a once obscure little gem located east of the Shalachi Prairie in southwest Washington. I've talked about this trail in two previous videos, both made before the fire raged through. I'll be using footage I retained from both of those visits to illustrate the scale of the change this canyon has undergone. The trail is open now but only for those who are willing to hike an extra four miles from the locked gate. The Forest Service is closing the old trailhead and placing the new trailhead three miles up the hill to the actual beginning of the trail, forcing hikers onto a part of the trail which was largely left to just us mountain bikers in years past. This first three miles of trail is completely untouched by the fire, and so it looks pretty much the same as it ever did. I met Jerry D in here to do some trail work, and some things never change. Jerry brought the digging tools and I brought my loppers, machete, and handsaw, and I'm glad I did because we didn't even get to the burned part of the forest before we were shoveling dirt and trimming vegetation. This canyon is gnarly and gets a lot of moisture in the winter, which means it also sees a lot of erosion, landslides, and plants growing over the tread. There's always work to be done inside this canyon. Like I said, the first three miles of this trail survived, completely untouched. The trail rides like it always did, and just like always, it's actually quite a long distance from the creek up here. I think the fact that the lower trailhead is no longer accessible is going to mean that there will be far fewer hikers on this trail in the future because it's now over three miles of hiking before you even see the creek. That said, the former slackpacking sites are now proper backpacking sites, and will be much more attractive destinations for folks looking for an 18-mile overnighter. Check this out! Sometimes, the blowdown is so rotten, you can clear it with the spade. Okay, we're a few minutes into the video now, so here's what you wanted to see. This is what Susan looks like after the burn. This is up near the parking lot, and it has definitely been redecorated by the fire. But it's not terrible, it isn't sterilized. We have not done a good job managing ladder fuels in our forests, so this fire did make it up into the canopy but it burned in more of a mosaic. So a lot of the trees are dead, a lot of trees don't know they're dead yet, and yet a surprising number of trees have also survived. This honestly looks like a relatively healthy burn as far as forest fires go. The surviving trees will grow larger and seed a much healthier forest where a thicket once stood. Here's what the parking lot for Susan looked like back in the spring of 2017. At the time, I was also counting quite a few cars in the parking lot, and Susan was starting to suffer from overuse. In spite of the difficult road up here, the place was under a lot of pressure. And here it is now, familiar but forever altered. The remnants of the old access trails are here, and the Susan Trail itself is still retained more or less in its original alignment. Let's do some more comparison shots just to give you an idea of what happened. Here's my friend JM descending this section of trail that goes down to the parking area back when I was reviewing the Susan to Huffman Peak Loop back in October of 2019. And here's some more footage of what it looks like now. Quite a bit more open, quite a bit more diverse. This is going to be gorgeous though, when the fireweed takes off next year. So let's take some time to do some more A-B comparisons of this section of trail.
Remember this really cool crossing here where the bridge crosses Susan so you can get to Chinook Falls? Well, not only is it now an eight mile hike into this intersection instead of five, but there's blowdown over this creek. And the saddest part of all is that the very recently built bridge over this narrow canyon is gone. I'm really stoked that the other bridges survived, but out of all the losses to this fire, this one stings the most. I know it's trivial compared to folks who lost their homes, their entire towns, their livelihoods, and sometimes their lives to the fires that consumed so much of Oregon and Washington during this weather event. But this is still sad. Blowdown is also going to continue to be an issue in this canyon as standing dead trees will be coming down for at least a decade as they succumb to wind, rot, and insects. We'll all need to pitch in to keep this area clear and to keep ourselves safe. Bring a handsaw with you every time you come into this canyon. All that having been said, as we were pedaling back out of here, I realized an old familiar feeling I'd been missing out on for a year, at least inside of this canyon, and that feeling is joy. Even with the profound transformation this canyon experienced, riding this trail is still just as joyful as it's ever been. The only constant is change, our deaths are all inevitable, and joy springs eternal. Through wind, fire, and erosion, this canyon will outlive us all and keep bringing joy to future generations. I'd like to thank all my Patreon supporters, especially my Lomi Goodness level sponsors Damon Corey, Randy Relithford, and Ty Morgan Marbit, who have had access to this video for a week already, as well as my Hero Dirt level sponsors earning a mention at the end of this video, Bryce Ulrich, Heather Van Valkenburg, Jason Moore, and Pedro Cantarini. Please consider joining the rest of these Patreon supporters by navigating to patreon.com slash voiceovertrails. Now, get out there and go ride your bike. <laughs>